This is cause number 2020 CR 7964 and 2020 CR 7671, the state of Texas versus Elisa, Elisa Espino. Attorneys, please make your announcements for the record. Madeline Fossey and Gretchen Flater for the state. Justin Fowles for the defense. Ms. Espino is appearing in person in the courtroom. Please state your full name for the record. Elisa Alma Espino. Okay. We're here for the results of the uh, pre-sentence investigation report. We're here uh, also on the uh, DDRF results and the TAP evaluation. Have you had a chance to review those, Mr. Falks? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections to those? No, Your Honor. Okay, this is an opposed application for deferred. State, do you have any witnesses you'd like to call? Yes, Judge, the state would call Nicholas Macris. Nicholas Macris. Sir, raise your right hand. Go ahead and unmute yourself first. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this cause shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you that? I do. Go ahead, state. Mr. Macris, um, thank you for joining us this morning. I, I just want to get straight into... Um, and to the reason that you're here today, April 23rd of 2020, you were a victim of an aggravated robbery. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And that was here in San Antonio, right? Correct. Okay. Um, and you had an opportunity to speak to the probation department in what's called the pre-sentence investigation, the PSI report, um, where you um, were able to explain to the court your thoughts on the case, as well as the restitution you were owed, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um were you able to, or have you forwarded to our office um, some medical bills as well as some restitution bills for your truck damage? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, those are the amounts that in some form or fashion you are still owed that money, correct? Yes. Okay. And um, the have you had contact with the crime victims a compensation unit? I have. Okay. Are they picking up some of your medical bills? Uh, so they have done some uh, up to this point. Uh, the only bill that is outstanding is the uh, complete medical bill from the three months stay at, at Brook Army Medical Center. And is that that one that's about eight hundred thousand or six hundred thousand? That's the one that that CD, the CVC is not going to pick up. Correct. Or as you know it now, CVC will not at, pick up. Okay. At this point, correct. Yes. Okay. And has anyone picked up the physical damage to your vehicle? No, ma'am. It's still damaged. I'm waiting on restitution. Okay. okay. Uh, judge, at this time, um, the state would offer the three attachments that are in my email that I said, I believe I copied. I know I said this to the clerk. I think I copied you on it. As states one, two, and three um, for restitution purposes. Judge, I believe state sent that to me as well. Uh, I received an email of three invoices for damage to the vehicle. I have no objection if that's what we're talking about. I don't, I don't have those. Um, unless it was part of the exhibit of the original plea. Because I have a... I, I sent it... <laughs> no, Judge, I sent it yesterday. I thought I had copied it. I know I sent it to, to Valerie, so she has it. Um, I thought I had included the court on it, but I know I sent it to her so she would have my exhibits. Okay, if there's no objection, I will admit them and uh, take a look at them. Okay. Uh, may I proceed, Judge? Yes. Okay. Mr. Macris, um, the court has before it, as, as you just saw, a very large amount of evidence. So she is familiar, this judge is familiar with what happened that night. But, but what do you want her to know about what happened that night? Uh, it has profoundly impacted my life uh and uh you know i have not i have not been able to continue with my career my teaching and coaching career uh because of the damp or the uh injuries sustained uh i'm still not fully healed uh i've you know uh, gone through 19 20 surgeries wow. and i'm waiting yeah. for my 21st mm -hmm. surgery i uh i'm I'll have to move back with my parents back here in tucson and you know it's really changed my situation um, in terms of my life uh, trajectory, I guess you could say. So, uh, yeah, very impactful uh, incident. And that night, um, what was running through your mind as, a, as I guess this was happening or as you got shot? Uh, I thought, well, 
as I got shot, I, I do I do vividly remember like laying on the side of the side of the street, you know, yelling for help, and uh, just thought I was gonna die. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know they said I, I there's bits and pieces I remembered, uh, like I remember getting getting uh, held at some point, and I remember um, throwing my keys, and then I remember the muzzle flash from the, from the first shot and how loud it was. And that was kind of the last thing I, rem I remember in terms of detail. And then I do remember that, you know, laying on the ground, yelling for help. And I don't remember any of that from there. I woke up about seven or eight weeks later in the hospital. And you don't have any memory of, of who assisted you that died or if any, anybody who's left in that, in your vehicle helped you out, right? No. Yeah. Nobody helped me. And that, they, 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 nobody, no. <laughs> Are you done with your surgeries? No, ma'am. I still have uh, one more to go. It's um, probably going to take place uh, in, within three to three to four months, depending on uh, how the healing went from my last surgery at Austin Universal in March. And so, uh, still, so when they put that back in, they got, had to rearrange some things inside, and then they got to wait for that to heal. And once that heals, I can have my last surgery. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you want this court to know as uh, they're deciding this morning? Uh, just take into account the situation and um, uh, see how best the community would be served with, with uh, the defendant behind bars as opposed to out on probation. Okay. I appreciate you logging in, Mr. Mackers. Uh, I don't have anything further. I'll pass the witness. Thank you. Any questions from the defense? No, Your Honor. State, no questions. No, Your Honor. May this witness be excused? Yeah, he can be excused or he can wait. Does he have victim impact? Uh, Mr. Macros, that's what I was messaging you about. Yep. You hadn't responded. You, you would you would like to? Yes? Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. So if you'll just remain it with us and then when the judge is ready for you, she'll let you know when you're ready to do your victim impact. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Judge. I don't have any further witnesses. Uh, like I said, I just offer those exhibits and then uh, the state has an argument when the court is ready. Do you have any witnesses? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay, hang tight. Let me take a look at those exhibits and I'll be right back. We can start arguments. Recording. We're still on the record, so I'm going to ask that you mute yourself if you're not part of this proceeding. Uh, once we finish with this proceeding, I'll call the 930 docket. So if you're on the 930 docket, make sure you're muted. Thank you. 
Let me just ask them something. Go ahead and don't stop that. I need to keep going. Madeline, before we go on the record, are you telling me that whatever you submitted was different than the numbers on the PSI? As far as restitution? I think that that adjust that number for the for the vehicle damage, if I remember correctly, it's slightly under what the estimate says. I think it's in the five range and the estimates in the six thousand range. But the medical uh, bills, the medical bills themselves, I don't know that he had an exact figure. That that big bill from Bamsey Samsey is um, I don't know that that exact figure was in there. It is six hundred ninety four thousand. Okay. 12680 okay. and then property damage 609052. Okay, then I, I was just incorrect, Judge. Yes, then then it's just the supplemental documentation that I guess I thought for some reason the numbers were not were not that specific. All right, uh, let's go on the record. Let's handle the argument, please, defense. Yes, Judge, on these cases, I would just like to remind the court that my client is charged as a party in both offenses. Um, essentially, she was used as bait. Uh, message, uh, to the victims in these cases, uh, and then, um, unfortunately, these uh, events took place. Um, since being uh, placed on pretrial, uh, my client hasn't had any issues. Um, she's gotten her driver's license. She's moved back in with her grandparents. Uh, she's uh, expected to complete high school uh, by the end of this summer. Um, she has a life coach. Uh, she also ha has um, her grandparents who have been in a positive uh, role model for her. Um, being back in their home has helped her a lot. Um, she uh, plans to attend barber school and also uh, she plans to uh, take community college classes because she's been in the foster care system. Uh, that school is uh, taken care of. Um, she's been advised of, of those benefits uh, that are available to her and those resources. Um, and she plans to take advantage of those. Um, she would also like to just address the court uh, for a few moments. Go ahead. Um, name is Alyssa Espino. Uh, I would like to say that uh, um, at the time I was really in a bad place. You know, I lost my dad and my mom too. Um, and I'm sorry. And I understand I have to face the consequences, but I just want to say sorry. And I understand what I did was not right, but I learned from my mistakes and I'm ready to be better. Oh, and I'm sorry also for, you know, talking to the officers the way I did. That was not right. And I apologize to them as well. It's all for me, Your Honor. Oh, I also want to thank Your Honor for allowing me to get my driver's license without the conditions that you approved for me to do that. I wouldn't have been able to, as well as getting a job. State. Argument. <clears throat> Judge, the state is well aware of the facts of this case, and I think the classification Miss Esp Espino was bait is offensive to someone like Mr. Macris. Miss Espino set that whole plan in motion. She was the one on Mocha Space. She was the one setting it up. She got him there. So to imply that she is some poor, innocent girl who 
just stumbled into this situation. It's just complete nonsense. What she didn't do in the police reports, really, and she certainly didn't do in the PSI, is take any responsibility for what she did. The first one, as she describes it, there was no gun, no responsibility. She was just riding in a stolen car. Uh, the second one, again, she was just there on her phone, heard some gunshots, turned around, and saw Mr. Macris on the ground as they were fleeing. Now she's come before this court to just give a blanket, I am sorry, uh, for what I don't know, because she certainly hasn't articulated any conduct that she believes she is truly sorry for. In addition, she, she, she states in the PSI that, that she's basically been good for a year, that she hasn't cut her monitor, she didn't get in touch with her co-defendants, and she didn't pick up any new cases. So she's done everything she needs to do. She's learned her lessons. What lessons? The state is very unclear as to what lessons it is that she's learned. But whatever they are, she's learned them. And for all of those reasons, with her zero responsibility and zero remorse and her self-proclaimed no drug problem, she should be given probation. She needs a second chance. So what she's telling this court is she just took part in these crimes, I guess, because she thought it would be fun to victimize people. She thought it would be fun to pull guns on people in cars and steal their cars and go on a 13-day crime spree where she victimized Bear County, not just one or two or three, even four people. There's a child that was impacted by her breaking into those cars. His own mother says in the stipulations, I don't know that the court has the misdemeanor stipulations, how scared he is now because they found Alyssa Espino in the vehicles that day. The state's position is that you do not get credit for not violating the terms of your bond. Uh, when you have been on a 13-day crime spree. I get that she is young. I don't discount that that is, that is a factor in this case. But I don't think that someone who hasn't taken responsibility for anything that they've done deserves uh, a treatment or an option at rehabilitation uh, because she doesn't have a drug problem. So sending her somewhere into a treatment facility, which someone who does have a drug problem would benefit from uh, would be a waste of resources for, for all those reasons uh, the state is asking that you send her to prison and if if the court decides that she should not go to prison then there needs to be some type of structured um, treatment program but I don't really know how we can send her to one when she says very clearly that she smoked marijuana once or twice when she's 13 and she was she was sober when she did this so for all those reasons, Judge, we are asking that you send her to prison. Thank you. And Judge, just briefly, I did ask Bianca about State ISF, the cognitive track, and she said that they do accept females. So, Ms. Espino, um, I am in the position today where I'm going to send you to prison. I'm not going to grant defer. I read all your text messages. I am that judge that assists officers in securing warrants. I know how these games are played. I believe you were a willing participant. I don't believe you were victimized or pressured into doing this. I don't believe that. And I think you know that because you told your friend, I'm going to be gone for a minute, right? You texted that? I'm gonna be gone for a minute. Just make sure you write me. I read every single thing that is submitted to me. And you texted that. You texted, you, you, you saw the blood. You all left that crime scene. By the way, I don't know that at that time you knew it was captured on somebody's ring camera in their home. The whole thing was captured on there. But you all left there without any regard to what was gonna to happen to the victim. You saw blood. And you had a chance to call the police because you very clearly had a phone. If you were to have changed your mind, call the police, gotten him some help, say, no, this is wrong, we can't do this, you'd be in a different standing with me. But you didn't. 
because you were a willing participant. And anyone who knows me as a judge knows how much I hate to send young people to prison. I don't enjoy that part of my job at all. But sometimes you don't give me a choice. And it's very rare for a young person to go to prison on the first time out of my courtroom. But in this case, I have to do it. This would have been a capital murder had Mr. Macris not survived. 22 surgeries later, $685,000 in medical, medical bills later, he's alive. And that's why this is an aggravated robbery. But you disregard it 100%. What happened after you guys left him on the floor, shot? And all those buddies of yours, they're in juvenile. One has already been sent to TYC. Some are on their way. But the entire responsibility of that night rests on your shoulders. The restitution, everything. So regardless of the sentence this morning, you will be, when you get out of prison, you will be in the hole with these medical bills. I don't know how you're going to pay them, but you're going to be responsible for them. And again, I don't take joy in sending any, any young person to prison. I believe you're a very smart girl. I saw, I saw those text messages. You're very smart. You may have been in a bad spot, but those were a lot of robberies in a very short period of time. And I don't know exactly what was happening. I know your background. I know you were in the CPS system. I know you ran away from your family. I know you always had your grandparents as a resource. I wondered why you didn't go to your grandparents for help. The, th the irony of this whole thing, Mrs. Espino, is that you ran away from your aunt and uncle's house because they were too strict. And now you're losing your freedom. So I'm going to send you away so that you can think about what you did, but you're still gonna have a life afterwards. Your attorney negotiated a very good plea for you. I'm going to find the evidence is sufficient to substantiate your guilt. I'm going to find you guilty of the offense of aggravated robbery and cause number ending in 7964 and cause number ending in 7671. I will assess punishment at five years confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Institutional Division. You get credit for the time you have served in this case. Both of these matters will run concurrent with one another. Restitution for the property damage is in the amount of $6,090.52. Restitution for medical bills is $694,126.80. This is a plea bargain case. I did follow your plea bargain agreement. You do not have a right to appeal. While we do victim impact, I'm going to pull up the trial court cert so I can sign it. Go ahead, State. Mr. Macris, uh, as I explained, you have an opportunity. If there's anything left that you would like to say directly to Ms. Espino, she is in the courtroom and will be uh, instructed to listen to you. So you have the floor to speak to her. Uh, thank you. Um, I just want Alyssa to know that uh, she was a part of something um, that not just changed her life, but it changed mine. Um, my body's been through... Uh, just about all that it can handle. Um, I still don't know how I'm alive right now, but uh, the fact of the matter is, Alyssa, that you, like the judge said, were part of the mastermind. And I hope you really do take the time in the system to better yourself. All those things your lawyer listed uh, that you wanted to do, you can do in college. You can do in this system. You can you can college degree you kind of you probably probably won't now maybe barber school or whatever you wanted to do but you can use that time to your advantage i don't want you to sit in there and not use your time to your advantage be bitter think about plots or anything of that nature for when you get out you need to take advantage of the situation even though it's not the ideal one for you 
you need to take advantage of it because you're otherwise you're just going to waste another four or five years of your life. And that's not going to benefit anyone. You need to come out as a better woman, as a better member of society and be ready to be an adult and act like an adult. Um, while I don't absolve you of any sort of wrongdoing, I do forgive your actions. Um, you know, life tells me that it's better to forgive and forget than to stay with resent and anger. Um, but please don't take this time as someone out to get you or someone to give you what you deserve. Take advantage of it because you'll be better served for it if you don't. If you don't, then you're going to start back at square one where you are today. So please take advantage of it. That's all I have. Thank, Thank you, Shemek. All the dismissals in this case, I don't have them. Judge, I, I sent them to you yesterday afternoon, right after we got off a of docket, I would say in like the four o'clock hour. I can send you reminders uh, here shortly on them as well, but I, I can't at the moment. So I just realized my email hasn't updated since yesterday at four o'clock. Uh, don't, don't send reminders. Let me just uh, restart my email, no problem. Okay. Uh, I did sign the uh, trial court certification and you are remanded to the custody of the sheriff's office to start your sentence today. We're going to go off the record. Judge, may Mr. Macros be excused? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Macros, I'll be in touch uh, in a little, little bit with you, okay? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. You. Yes, sir. Judge, may I be excused as well? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to take a brief recess and then I'll call the 930 docket. Does anyone need a breakout room right now? Yes, uh, this is Robert Gebbia. I'd like to go into a breakout room with Mr. Cadriel. And then Ed Piker. Ed, who do you need a breakout room with? Uh, my client, Joe Ramon. Go over to paperwork. <clears throat> Thank you. Ashley, can I go into breakout room of Santiago to see us, please?
Yeah, I've been waiting here since eight o'clock. Anyone else need a breakout room? Actually, we're uh, we're ready on Santiago of Casillas uh, sentencing, wherever the court is. Thank you. Awesome. Judge will take status when she calls docket. Oh, okay, gotcha. I think Thank the, you. kind of on Ashley, the case, you might be a little more. Ashley had Clacker on back for my guy as well. We're ready when you are. Mr. Um, Paul Acevedo. Oh, have you gone over the paperwork with your client? Because I show that it's still with him. No, did you submit it? Yeah. He has to yeah, sign it. it. It has not been submitted. So you need to try again. I'll send a reminder. Okay, let us look it up right now. Okay. Is Mr. Guerra on? Martin Guerra. Hey, Gretchen. I know that you're asking about the paperwork probably. Yeah. Yep. Here's the situation. Yesterday, I just, I spoke too soon. Um, my client, I didn't realize he's going to be working today. He can't get to uh, his Zoom. And so I was going to go ahead and explain that to the judge. I don't know if there's a way we can maybe do the plea either uh, tomorrow in front of a different judge if she's going to be gone or... Okay, we'll ask her when she gets on. Thank yeah. you. Gretchen, I received paperwork for Joe Ramon. Yeah. But um, the paperwork, like where I sign, it's like where he needs to sign, like where he pleads guilty or no contest and then he certifies that he's a citizen and then his name I'm, i don't understand. so he signed in the wrong place i guess he didn't sign i don't know where he's there's no signature for him i mean i can sign for him i guess I'm on. I just talked to him about all that. He said uh, he signed two days ago, so maybe he didn't understand what he was doing. I don't see his signature anywhere on here. I I don't see it either, but why would it let it go forward? Did I screw something up? I mean, I can fill this out. Um, Ed, you're the attorney, right? Yes. What is, is he going to plead? Uh, He's going to no plead contest? no contest, correct. And he is a oh. citizen. Uh, yes, I forgot he is. to I forgot to include him. Should I redo it? No, no, no. no Ashley can it. do it. It's we went over the paperwork. I went over it with him verbally just five minutes ago. He understands all that. But they won't have a, a signature on it. Uh, I, I'm doing the signature, Gretchen. Okay. All right. Thank you. 